Hello everybody, it's Kyle Van Voorst with Voorst.com and today we are gonna discuss how to analyze sales development metrics to determine what's going on with the team. Let's dive right in. All right, so this should be pretty exciting stuff, probably a longer video than normal today because I wanna dissect a data set from an SDR team, a real SDR team, I just hid the names and do an analysis and see what I can figure out just by looking at their activity and results metrics. So if you run an SDR team or you're an SDR yourself, you're gonna to wanna to listen to this because I'm gonna show you exactly how to figure out some key levers that you can focus on and improve to improve the team performance or your own performance if you're an individual SDR. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything else. All right, I bring to you a spreadsheet. <laughs> now, I'm gonna go through this spreadsheet, but before I start playing with all of these different uh, cells and adding formulas and whatnot, I just wanna walk you through what this data is. So we're looking at a four week period week one, week two, week three, week four, and there are two reps on this particular team. What data do we have? Well, it's broken down very nicely, and this is what I try to do with all of the organizations that we work with, is I try to get as granular as possible with our, um, with our tracking because it helps us understand the effectiveness of individuals as well as specific channels. So if you look here, dials, email, LinkedIn, phone connects, email replies, LinkedIn replies, and then demo set phone, demo set email, demo set LinkedIn, and we have some totals. So <clears throat> now if you're looking at this type of information, and actually let's, um, I wanna clear this out so we don't get confused here. So if you're looking at this data and you're an SDR manager or an SDR, you may be thinking, well, what was the goal and where did we land? pretty important metric. Based on what I'm seeing here week over week as a team, and we can even just total these. Um, by the way, don't judge my formulas. I'm, I'm not the greatest in the world, but I'm not too bad. Is that doing it right? Yeah, it is. Look at us. We are doing great here, folks. Okay. <clears throat> so if you look as a team, 16, 22, 9, and 12. I'm going to guess the quota is around um, probably around 15 meetings a week, maybe 18 meetings a week, or they just had an incredibly good, but I'm gonna guess it's probably around 15 to 18. That's just a guess. I actually don't know what their quota is. This, is, uh, this isn't an active client. This is just somebody who asked me to analyze their data, which if you want me to do, feel free to send it my way. I'll make it anonymous. Okay, so let's take a peek here. We have some totals, and let's say the team overall is not doing, they're not hitting their numbers, but they're not that far off, right? over four month period of time, if the quota was 15, I mean, it doesn't matter what the quota is, so let's not even talk about it. Doesn't look too bad on the surface, but the question is, are there any levers we can pull to have more 22 demo weeks and less nine demo weeks? That's the goal. Can we smooth out those peaks and those valleys? So here's how I would go about doing it. So the first thing that I would look at and how I would do this, I, was, I would insert some, uh, columns here. Hopefully this is useful for you guys. I'm, I'm walking through exactly how I would go about figuring this out. So the first thing I want to look at is the effectiveness of each channel. And when I say effectiveness, I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. But the idea is of the phone calls we make, what percentage of them are actually connecting? Wait, did I do that wrong? Oh, it's uh, divided by my bed. Uh, da -da, divided by here. Perfect. Okay, great. <clears throat> so now we're looking at phone effectiveness, okay? Or not even phone effectiveness, but dial to connect rate. Dial to connect. Now, why am I looking at dial to connect? Because there's something really important in the numbers when you're looking at dial to connect it will typically tell you the quality of the call list. So when I run this here, I look and I see, huh, we had a pretty steady 15% dial to connect rate and it drops to five. That's a huge drop. And it dropped to five 
for a solid two weeks. So immediately I'm thinking in my head, if I'm gonna to talk to a client about this, I'm gonna say, hey, tell me what happened week three. What did your reps do week three? Because something has dramatically changed here. So that's dial to connect. Let's look at email to reply. And I get the argument here that some people are already thinking, but reply rate doesn't mean it was a positive reply. I get it, I know that, but it still tells us something. Oh, I just, I didn't even think about what I was doing there, my bad guys. So you go equals, do, do, do email replies divided by, Okay, let's take a look, what do we got? Boom, <clears throat> all right, email to reply. So it looks like rep one, 2%, rep two, 2%, five, five, pretty even, five, five, three, and 12. So 12 is a really big jump. Could it be noise? Maybe, I mean, they sent 60 emails, got seven replies. It could be noise, but I would be curious to see if rep two changed something. It's possible because rep two sent less emails that they were more focused on personalizing or doing something else to increase this email reply rate, but it's not too enough data to really say. Ultimately though, I'm pretty comfortable saying that their email reply rates are low. <laughs> I'm comfortable saying that much. Okay, so let's talk about LinkedIn. How's LinkedIn doing? LinkedIn to reply. I don't know why it wants to bold and underline everything. So let's do the exact same thing. We're gonna divide the LinkedIn replies by how many they sent. I'm gonna change it into a percentage, drag it over, boom. Let's look, 10% for both of them, 6%, 10%, 6%, 10%, 10%, 18%, 18%. So I find that interesting too, like both emails and LinkedIn jumped up in reply rate, which I think is really interesting to me. Overall though, like if we were to look at an average, so let's just do let's just do it so we have it for everything. Just so we kind of have an idea. Okay, so if we look at <clears throat> some of the averages here, we have average of 10% dial to connect rate, but this big drop for two weeks tells me they changed the list. So that's one thing that you can already take away from this, okay? Now, what about other kinds of effectiveness? Okay, so this, let's do, um, let's do phone connect to demo percentage, okay? And what we're gonna do is do the exact same thing as before. So they set six demos through the phone and they connected with 26 people. That's interesting. That's a pretty monster number. All right, let's go all the way through. Boom. Okay, so what are we learning here? I see something very obvious. Very, very obvious. Can you see it? Take a second. Look at the numbers. Maybe I'll scroll up. Here's a hint. Rep 1, 22%. Rep 2, 12. Rep 1, 22%. Or 25%. Rep 2, 9 Rep one, 18%, rep two, 13%, 28%, 11%. I can definitively say rep one is way better at cold calling than rep two. So now as a manager, or if this is your own data, you have to ask yourself, how can I make rep two more effective, right? And maybe there's something rep one's doing that rep two isn't, maybe rep two's newer. There's a lot of reasons why the number, the data, would tell us this. As a manager, as a leader, or as somebody invested in their own personal growth, you need to answer the question why. So that's a big piece of learning here. I wanna do the same thing with email. I guess it wouldn't be call to demo. I'm just gonna do this right, how about that? Everyone, you guys watching this are like, can we just get to the point here, buddy? I agree, but my point needs to look nice. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do the exact same thing with email. So demo set on email one, email replies three. 
change this to a percent, drag it over, boom, what are we looking at? All right, 33, 34, 14, 33, 28, 40, 19, 41. Okay, so here's what's interesting. What we're starting to see is that rep two actually has a strength here. Rep two is better at email. Well, this is the perfect situation, right? Like if you're looking at rep one versus rep two, there might be some crossover in how they can help each other improve. So I think that's really interesting. I can't wait to see what happens when we look at LinkedIn. So let's do the same thing with LinkedIn. LinkedIn replies. Change this to a percent. Hopefully you guys are decent at Excel because you kind of have to be. Um, <clears throat> all right, so 50%, crazy. It's not that many though, so that's fine. Uh, 37%, 50. LinkedIn's pretty crazy for them, 0%. I mean, in general though, so with some outlier, like LinkedIn is a really strong, stronger than I normally see. Wow, okay. So the conversion on LinkedIn is really high. Really high for both of them, to be fair, for both of them. I mean, maybe, yeah. I mean, both of them pretty pretty clearly are good at LinkedIn. So here's kind of what I'm thinking when I'm looking at all of this data. LinkedIn is a really low activity metric for them, but 10% of those activities get a reply and with an average of 36% of those activities get a reply on LinkedIn. So it's pretty interesting to me. Now, look, there's something you have to be careful with. I can't just say stop everything and focus 100% on LinkedIn because the numbers may drastically change. Like I don't know how they're using LinkedIn, this particular company. What this tells me just because these numbers are so high is they're probably mostly using LinkedIn for follow-ups, maybe like qualification calls, and they're still trying to get the demo scheduled, they use LinkedIn, or maybe it's inbound leads, nurture leads that they focus on LinkedIn. I'm not sure why this number would be so high, but that would be the question I'd have. Hey, how are you guys using LinkedIn today? Now, if it was the case where it was like, no, this was completely cold, which I doubt, if it was completely cold, it would be this like, hey, why are we not just doing more LinkedIn? Because even if there's diminishing returns, we're probably gonna yield more productivity than continuing doing as many emails. I bet a lot of these, I don't know. What, what is this daily? Like this, this is interesting to me too. So if we do some, I mean, let me just figure out what this is per day. 34, okay, so like doing nothing. Okay, so they're doing, so rep one is doing 63 activities a day. Okay, probably mostly manual. Um, Call-wise, they're not doing very much, which I think is not a, not a good decision considering their data connect rate, at least what it used to be before this weird 5%, you know, this weird drop to 5%. Their data connect rate is, was strong, 15%. Um, what am I doing here? Divided by five. Oh, wow, wow. So that rep that week did a lot more per day. But then it kind of evens out. Oh no, right here, rep two did a lot less, interesting. So sometimes it's tough because I don't know what happened week three, like maybe this rep wasn't here, maybe this rep missed a day. Um, you know, we know, let's say it's 20 working days. Um, if we do this plus this, plus this, plus this, divided by 20, 87. I doubt it's gonna do this if I just move it over. Did it? Whoa, Google, you're the best. Okay, so if you look at it, you say assume 20 days in a month, unless I did some math wrong, which I don't think I did. They're doing a good amount of activity a day. I just, that was an outlier uh, day. So. That's not bad, assuming a lot of this stuff is manual, which it may or may not be, we don't know. 
after looking at all of this data, there's a couple key things that I think we should take away. One, why did the dial to connect rate drop? Did we change a list? What happened here? That's a big one. Two, how can we help as, uh, rep two do better on a cold call? Three, how can, can we help rep one do better on email? And four, what is going on with LinkedIn? <laughs> because I am liking these numbers and they're a little bit fishy to me. So there's some other stuff we could do here. I think this video has gone on long enough. <laughs> Let me know if you like this kind of content and I can keep doing it. Just wanted to give you an idea on how you can break down sales development metrics to really glean meaningful insights for your business that'll help shape the decisions you make and overall improve the effectiveness of your team. And if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you like, subscribe, let me know so I'll keep doing it. I appreciate you watching and I look forward to talking to you next time.